everyone. Welcome to episode two of Coffee with Kay. So I've been thinking lately about what types of videos I want to make on this channel. I think what I want to do moving forward is create content that talks about things I wish I had heard sooner in my dance career or just my life in general or things that really changed my perspective on something. So today I want to talk about how being skinnier will not make you a better dancer. This is one thing that I really wish I could go back and just tell my past self, especially when I was in college. I mean, I just graduated this week, but throughout college, it was something that I always had on my mind. And I just want to share this with you guys because I don't care if it only affects like two people, if I can at least get you thinking about your intentions with yourself and your body, I will feel like I did something good for the world. <laughs> So to some people who have never really struggled with any kind of like body image issues or like self-confidence regarding your body, this probably won't make a lot of sense to you. But if it has, I feel like a lot of the things I'm gonna bring up will resonate with you. So please stick around throughout the video. I'm also gonna give you some tips and some things that will improve your dancing that are not related to getting skinnier. <laughs> so I'm gonna start by talking about my own story just a little bit, but I'm not gonna go fully into it because I already made a video about that. And if you wanna watch it, I'll link it below and you can take a look at that after after you finish this one. But so I grew up doing ballet since I was three years old up until I graduated high school and I never really had any kind of body image issues until maybe high school when you started getting selected for specific roles and things and that's also a time when people's bodies start to develop you know especially if you're a girl you start to look a little bit different so I started building a little bit more muscle started kind of filling out a little bit and it seemed to me like the girls who were getting the really good roles and the girls who were just really amazing dancers they all had the same kind of body type where they were just very skinny ballerina tall long leg and they just seemed like they could like float around on their point shoes and they could be partnered and lifted around so easily and I started to get this idea that the reason that I wasn't as good as them was because I looked different and that maybe if I were skinnier then I could be as good as them looking back I do recognize that these girls just happened to be very talented and very hardworking, and that is why they got these roles. It probably wasn't to do specifically with their body types, but it did seem like the girls who had this ideal body type were kind of preferred by teachers and directors within our company, which I could rant on later about how toxic that is to young girls' mindsets, but... It did seem like these were the girls that were getting a little bit more attention, maybe even in class they were getting more critiques or they get called out more about doing something well. I thought I was never going to be as good as them because I didn't think my body was ever capable of looking like that. So that's kind of when I broke off a little bit from ballet because I just felt like I was never going to achieve that ideal and there were other styles of dance that would suit me better. Yeah, but then I went into college and I was no longer dancing in a studio. I was dancing on my college dance team, which don't get me wrong, is a ton of physical activity and it will keep you in really good shape. But I was kind of counteracting all of that by like eating a little bit more, partying, and also I wasn't dancing in a studio anymore where we were really focusing on technique every single day. So I started to notice that my dancing wasn't as good anymore, at least in my eyes. So technically speaking, I noticed that my dancing was kind of going down. Um, and rather than do the logical thing, which would be maybe like start taking technique classes or just work on my technique more, I thought, okay, it's probably because my body looks like this. If I were a little bit fitter, if I was skinnier or whatever, maybe I would be a better dancer. Like, oh, my leap isn't getting that high and it's probably because I need to lose weight. Like if I were lighter, my leap would be higher. And I guess there's some sense to that mentality, but I think it would, part of it was just me subconsciously knowing that I was unhappy with the way that I looked and trying to find excuses to make myself lose weight. That's kind of like my backstory and now I want to talk a little bit about things that you can be doing that actually will improve your dancing that have nothing to do with weight loss. And I am not a healthcare professional. I have a bachelor's of business administration as of like two days ago. That being said, if you feel like you have any kind of disordered eating tendencies and you don't think that you can tackle this issue on your own, I really recommend that you reach out to like a registered dietitian or someone who is a professional that can help you. But so I think in general, 
It's really not a good idea for you to be focusing on losing weight, especially if you are under 18 years old, okay? Your body is not even fully developed yet and you're trying to change it. In the long run, restricting your calories, just doing all kinds of crazy cardio or whatever to try and lose weight is not what's gonna benefit you and your dancing. Better to just make overall healthy lifestyle choices and do things that are actually gonna help your performance, not worry about your weight. Because you're risking so many things, like your body might start breaking down muscle tissue for energy you might be messing with your hormone balance which is already an issue for I know a lot of young dancers who are extremely active like that could mess with you not getting your period and things like that so please be careful I can make a whole nother video talking about food and how I've gotten to a place where I'm comfortable just eating whatever I want but I still make pretty healthy choices but that's not the subject of this video so here are some examples of things that you can do that will impact your dancing positively number one is cross training which I talk about all the time, but in my personal experience, ever since getting injured and having to go to physical therapy and work with a trainer twice a week for like six months, I've noticed such a difference in my body and the way that I move and the way that I dance. Uh, like I made an Instagram post about this a couple days ago of how my balance is a lot better now ever since I started training outside of dance. And it's not like I was just going out and doing a bunch of releves. I was doing like flat footed balances where someone throws me a ball, like really random stuff that you would never do in dance, but it helped me so much. Even if you add in some kind of cross training, resistance training, once or twice a week, you will notice a difference. You'll be able to jump higher, your balance is gonna be better. You can work out different issues that you might be having, like if you feel like your hips are always bothering you, it might be because you have a muscle imbalance somewhere else. And overall, it just makes you a healthier person. It's also important for reducing your risk of injury, which is something that I'm very passionate about talking about. Um, if you're new here, I tore my ACL, and so I've been recovering from that. Although that wasn't something that I could have necessarily prevented, cross training will prevent those other injuries that might come up like fractures or sprains strains that kind of thing the next thing would be to learn how to eat and cook nutritious foods that are fueling your performance and not just choosing things because they are low in calories or that they might help you lose weight or look skinnier you shouldn't have to give up eating the more fun foods that you like like donuts or cake or pizza or whatever you your heart desires it's just about assessing your overall eating patterns and trying to make i know they say like 80 percent of those foods to be healthier more nutritious options and it doesn't have to just be like salad every single day eat things that are going to fuel you and your body for the intense dancing and exercises that you're going to be doing, foods that will help you retain your muscle, and just know that there's never going to be any kind of like magic pill, magic food, magic type of diet that will change the way that your body looks drastically. And just having a balanced outlook on your diet and your nutrition is such a better way to go, especially if you find yourself feeling really fatigued throughout the day or you get tired easily. Uh, like I said before, talk to your doctor. If, if those things are getting serious, you might actually be deficient in something. Figure out what your body needs and fuel it properly. Other things that will help your dancing. Taking dance classes, like duh, that seems so obvious, but I wish that I had done that more throughout college, is just take recreational classes, even if it's something that's not technique based or it's a completely different style of dance than you are used to. I mean, that can help you too because it can help you with your memory, it can help you learn how to pick up choreography and things like that. If you don't have the time or the money to spend on going to additional classes, then you can always just take advantage of the classes that you're already in. So ask your teachers for feedback or for critiques if you don't feel like you're getting enough of them and then really try to implement them so go home think about the stuff that the teacher told you that night even if you want to just lay down at night before you go to sleep visualize yourself and the corrections that the teacher has told you and in your mind picture yourself doing those things lots of athletes do this and it's been shown to be able to improve your performance so take advantage of the feedback that you're already getting you can also record yourself or have someone record you i think it's super valuable to be able to watch yourself and see like oh i tend to fall 
to the right on my turns and so I need to start focusing on pulling back into the left a little bit. We actually danced my whole four years in college. We did not have any mirrors um, in our band hall where we practice and so we relied on watching ourselves dance through recordings. And even though like not having mirrors it's kind of frustrating sometimes but watching yourself on video can be even better because you can see like the sides of your body, the back of you, things that you're not always looking at in the mirror. Another thing is to just stop comparing yourself to other dancers. It's okay to look up to others and to aspire to have certain characteristics or qualities of that person, but just be focused on yourself being better than the person that you were the day before and not so much being better than the other girl in your class or being the best in the class, but just being better than the person that you were the day before because ultimately you are an individual, you bring something unique to the table and those people might actually be looking at you and looking up to some of the characteristics and the qualities that you have. So don't sell yourself short, know that you excel at something and that you just need to keep building on yourself. And the last thing I'm gonna say is you really just need to put in the work. Getting skinnier is just like, it's a detour to, to being a better dancer, okay? Like what impacts your dancing is you dancing and pushing yourself to do better every single day. You're not gonna get better by sulking, thinking that you should look a different way, by comparing yourself to other people. You get better by going out and putting your feedback into action and putting in the work. So there are probably a lot more things that I could say that would improve your dancing. If you thought of anything that you think is important, please leave a comment below or let me know if you liked watching this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I post videos twice a week on Wednesdays and Sundays. If you want to watch the video where I talk about my story with my body, you can click right here. Other than that, I will see you guys in a few days. Bye-bye!